In our discussion of polyatomic molecules so far, we have talked about uh, hybridization, uh, we have discussed sp, sp2 and sp3 hybridization. These orbitals are involved in linear, trigonal planar and tetrahedral geometries respectively. A very important point about these orbitals is that these are examples of equivalent hybrid orbitals. But if you remember our very first discussion where we talked about Pauling's theory, we had said that hybrid orbitals are formed by mixing of orbitals using mixing coefficients. There is no guarantee that these coefficients have to be the same for our, all orbitals. Energy has to be conserved of course. So, today in our concluding discussion of uh, hybridization, we are going to talk about non-equivalent hybrid orbitals and a good system where one has to use non-equivalent hybrid orbitals is our good old water. In water molecule, the uh, bond angle is not 109.5 degrees as you would expect for uh, this tetrahedral geometry. It is not very difficult to see that you expect water uh, in water you expect oxygen atom to be uh, sp3 hybridized right because uh, you, it needs 4 hybrid orbitals 2 for the lone pair uh, sorry 2 for the bond pair and 2 for the lone pair. But uh, the bond angle experimentally observed for water is 104.5 degrees. So of course the hybridization is not exactly sp3 it is something different it has to be something between uh, sp3 and uh, well it has to be something beyond sp3 because sp2 bond angle is 120 degrees sp is 180 degrees. So, as you go from sp to sp2 to sp3 bond angle keeps on uh, decreasing right 180 to 120 to 109.5. What we see is that for water bond angle is even lesser than 109.5 degrees. So, p contribution in these orbitals must be a little more than uh, 75 percent. p contribution in the orbitals used to accommodate lone pairs that has to be uh, a little less right. So, this is something that we understand now we will work out how much p contribution what is the expression. Again as we can hold the molecule in whatever way we want in order to make our life simpler we hold it like this. We hold the molecule in uh, yz plane right and we hold it in such a way that uh, this hoh bond angle is exactly bisected by the z axis ok. So, I have written this uh, theta and theta which means bisection. So, 2 theta is 104.5 degrees theta would be 51.25 degrees sorry 52.25 uh, degrees ok. Where are the lone pairs? Lone pairs are in the zx plane. The good thing about doing this is that if something is in the yz plane some hybrid orbital then there is no contribution from px is not it. So, uh, one parameter less. Similarly, for the lone pairs the hybrid orbitals are in zx plane that means there is no contribution from the p orbital. So, one parameter less. So, that is how we are going to proceed ok. So, let us write like this. You might remember how we had written the expression in the very first the very first expression we had written for hybrid orbitals involved cos theta and sin theta. Here also we write like that we say that uh, the two hydrogen atoms are named H A and H B. So, the sp3 hybrid orbital used to form bond with A well this is not really sp3 notionally sp3 I am writing like that but uh, I might as well just have written phi A. So, phi A is given by uh, what will be the contribution of Pz the angle between z axis and this hybrid orbital is theta. So, uh, contribution of Pz has to be proportional to cos theta ok. Then similarly uh, the angle between uh, y axis and this orbital is 90 degrees minus theta. So, uh, this coefficient has to be proportional to sin theta and for psi 2s I do not know what the coefficient is I will just write minus alpha and then the whole thing is multiplied by n because you have to normalize the orbital also. Okay. Similarly, we can write an expression for uh, phi b as well. The only difference between phi a and phi b is that uh, a, this, this orbital this hybrid orbital used for bonding with h b is towards the negative side of the y axis. So, uh, here we will have a negative sign. So, we write that negative sign explicitly and write minus sin theta psi 2 p y. 
but then why have I written a minus sign in front of alpha? We do not have to it might as well as uh, might as well be plus it does not matter. But the good thing about writing uh, minus sign for uh, psi is this uh, for psi 2 s is this if you remember uh, for uh, 2 s orbital there is a radial node is not it. So, the sign of wave function near the nucleus is let us say positive then it goes down to 0 at some point goes further down becomes negative here and then becomes 0 asymptotically after going to a minimum. So, if I just write psi 2 s then it is likely to imply that this red portion is plus and this blue portion is minus. The problem is this now I am going to mix it with uh, a p orbital and if you remember our discussion of why that uh, nucleus is in the minor lobe of hybrid orbitals you can uh, understand that the sign of the inner lobe is actually the sign of the minor lobe. The uh, sign uh, the sign of uh, 2 s wave function inside between uh, the nucleus and the radial node is the sign of the uh, minor lobe of the hybrid orbital. So, conventionally we like to keep the sign of the uh, major lobe plus that is why we use a negative sign for the coefficient of 2 s, but it is not compulsory you might as well uh, keep it positive it does not make any difference. Alright. So, now to determine the coefficient first relation that we will use is orthogonality between these two hybrid orbitals. So, this is the orthogonality relation as we know. So, we can write n square then in bra vector we write phi a sp 3 in ket vector we write this and when we expand this what are we going to get? We are going to get a uh, sum of terms in principle you have 3 and you are multiplying by 3 you should get that many terms, but it is not required because we know that when we uh, open the bracket we are get, going to get terms like. So, suppose uh, I take this and this what will I get cos square theta integral psi 2 p z psi 2 p z overall space. Now, this is normalized. So, this is actually going to be 1. Similarly, when you take sin theta psi 2 p y and minus sin theta psi 2 p i you are going to get uh, minus sin square theta integral I will not even write it psi 2 p y in bra psi 2 p y in ket that is equal to 1 and then you get plus alpha square psi 2 s in bra, bra and uh, psi 2 s in ket vector. However, if you want to take this and this what will you get? You get minus sin theta cos theta multiplied by integral psi 2 p z psi 2 p y overall space and we know that they are orthogonal. So, this is going to be equal to 0. So, we do not bother about cross terms like those we simply open the bracket and uh, obtain this expression and this further simplifies to this. So, you get n square multiplied by cos square theta minus sin square theta plus alpha square is equal to n square cos 2 theta minus alpha square that is equal to 0 cos square theta minus sin square theta is cos 2 theta as we know. All right. Now, do we know uh, cos 2 theta we do do we know n we do not, but it does not matter because n cannot be 0. So, we forget about that we equate cos 2 theta plus alpha square equal to 0 and we know that cos 2 theta is equal to 104.5 degrees. So, uh, we might as well substitute the value of cos 2 theta here and find out the value of alpha is that uh, clear you are going to get alpha square equal to minus cos 2 theta. So, when you su substitute that this is what you will get alpha turns out to be 0 0.5 and we take the plus root because we have written the minus sign already and uh, when you use the values of uh, this sin theta and cos theta cos theta and sin theta remember what to th what theta is 2 theta is 104.5 degrees. So, theta is equal to simply 52.25 degrees. So, uh, cosine and sin of 52.25 degrees are 0 0.61 and 0 0.79 respectively we have got this. 
what is left to be done? We have to find n. How will I do it? By uh, using normalization. We are going to normalize the orbital equate to 1. So, you get an equation like this. Okay. Once again uh, we do not have to bother about anything that involves a product of 2 different orbitals and we know that these orbitals are normalized. So, these all become equal to 1 and finally, you get n to be equal to 0 0.89. I am going quickly here because it is very easy we have done so many things already we are running out of time. So, in case there is a problem please do not hesitate to contact us. Okay. So, n equal to 0 0.89. Now, it is done you just multiply whatever you had earlier sin theta cos theta 0 0.5 by 0 0.89 you get the final expression for these uh, hybrid orbitals a and b and these are the final expressions. What can we find from here? We can find out the uh, uh, s coefficient and p coefficient sorry s contribution and p contribution. So, we can find out the s contribution and p contribution from the coefficients and that gives us percentage p character is 0.55 square plus 0.711 square this square plus this square that turns out to be 0 0.8 percentage s character is equal to 0 0.2. So, 20 percent s character 80 percent p character. So, uh, this hybridization is actually sp4 hybridization not really sp3 hybridization. Now, if I just say it casually you might think where did that fourth p orbital come from? The fourth p orbital did not come from anywhere. Uh, this uh, exponents here simply are proportional to the s character and p character that is all. There are only 3 in fact the way I have written it here only 2 of the p orbitals have contributed but it does not matter. The percentage p character percentage s character these are things that are reflected in what kind of hybridization it is. So, we have this interesting observation for that the hybrid orbitals used in the bond bonding pair to used for the bonding pair in water are actually sp4 hybridized. What about the hybrid orbitals that are used for lone pair? Of course, their hybridization has to be something like spn where n is less than 3 yeah because uh, average has to be sp3 there are 3 p orbitals after all. So, for the lone pairs we can write uh, the expressions once again like this d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 d8 these are the coefficients we start with that. Then we remember that the lone the hybrid orbitals used for lone pairs they are actually in your x z plane. x z plane means uh, contribution uh, well coefficient of this psi 2 pi is equal to 0. So, d2 dx of course has to be equal to 0. Okay. Uh, this is a, a different perspective of showing the same thing. What do we not know? We do not know this capital phi we do not know the angle. Okay. So, as we are saying d2 equal to d6 equal to 0 fine that is very simple. What more can we do? First of all let us write the expressions with d2 and d6 set to 0 this is what you get. Now, you have d1, d3, d4, d5, d7, d8. Now, see it is not very difficult to understand that uh, contribution of s has to be same for both these hybrid orbitals is not it. Remember the case of hybrid orbitals used for bonding pair contribution of s was same in both sp4 right. Uh, contribution of p was also the same. In this case what will happen is contribution of s has to be same, contribution of pz has to be same, contribution px has to be same that is what happened earlier also. Here the thing is that each of the p orbitals involved right makes equal contribution to the both to both the orbitals. Okay, because they are symmetric look at this z axis look at the uh, hybrid orbitals. Okay. Uh, the contribution of p z here will be same as contribution of p z here. Look at the p x orbitals the only difference is that contribution of p x will be positive for L p 1 contribution of p x will be negative for L p 1 but magnitude has to be same. So, we can write d 8 equal to minus d 4 d 5 equal to d 1 d 3 equal to d 7. So, this is what this uh, pair of equation becomes alright. Now, the matter is not very difficult we have to find 1, 2, 3 coefficients and we have 2 equations. How will you do it? 3 coefficients, 2 equations we can actually do it because we do not have 2 equations 
we have 4 equations. Remember we have already worked out the uh, equations for the other hybrid orbitals that turned out to be sp4. Now we have 3 unknowns and 4 equations no problem. Actually to start with we had 4 unknowns and 4 equations it is just that we have worked out one of them already. Now what will I get then total contribution of 2pz has to be 1. So d1 square plus d1 square plus 0.55 square plus 0.55 square that is equal to 1. For 2s d3 square plus d3 square equal to 0.5 square plus 0 0.5, 0 0.45 square plus 0 0.45 square equal to 1. For 2px 2d4 square plus 0 is equal to 1 right that is very simple and from there you work out these d coefficients also. I went very quickly here because uh, I think this is very simple algebra which you can handle by yourself please let us know in case of any difficulty. But uh, to end this discussion what we observe is that in these uh, hybrid orbitals used to accommodate the lone pair your percentage s character is 30 percent percentage p character is 70 percent okay? or rather I am saying percentage twice that sounds uh, little silly. So s character is 30 percent p character is 70 percent. So again this is not sp3 this is not sp4 this is s 2 point something. Okay. If I normalize with respect to z what is 7 with respect to 3 7 by 3 right. So I can say s p 7 by 3 so p 7 by 3 will be 2.3 or something like that right s p 2.3 something between sp 2 and sp 3. So uh, what will the angle be please work it out yourself I will not work out but you can work out yourself what is the angle between the uh, hybrid orbitals that accommodate the lone pair. And this is a very pet question that we have. So this is what it is if you now compare uh, all the 4 orbitals together you will see that it makes perfect sense total contribution of psi p to z is equal to total contribution of psi 2 s is equal to total contribution of psi 2 p x is equal to total contribution of psi 2 p y everything individually is equal to 1 there is absolutely no problem. What we have done is that we have used different contributions of these wave functions to construct hybrid orbitals that are suitable for uh, accommodating the bond, bond pair and lone pair right that is all we have done we have synthesized the hybrid orbitals according to the experimental result. Please do not put the cart before the horse and think it is the other way round. Okay. Uh, last uh, point just to mention in the passing is that sp3 is not the only well S, the uh, sp orbitals are the non, or not on not the only orbitals that participate in hybridization uh, you can have for example if you want octahedral if you want to explain octahedral geometry the hybridization used is sp3d2 you can have sp3d and so on and so forth you can have uh, trigonal bipyramid sp3d and you can work out the coefficients exactly in the similar way as you have as we have done in our sp sp2 sp3 sp4 and sp2.3 hybrid orbitals.